Okay, it's time to replace the anode on our uh, Suburban 12 gallon water heater here on our 2018 Alpine. It's a 3400 RS model. And this is what you're replacing. This is an extended life magnesium uh, rod. And they also make an aluminum one. I, I prefer the magnesium. And then also something that you might wanna pick up is you can make your own, but basically this is a tank rinser and it allows you to rinse the sediment out of the tank and you will see a ton of it come out. Um, I haven't pulled it yet, but I'm anticipating it's not gonna be pretty. I've gotten lax and I do have a little surface rust here, nothing really to worry about, but I'm gonna clean all this up. Um, so for the first step is to uh, release the pressure in the tank. Obviously the, the hot water is been, has been turned off all day, so it's not hot inside. So I've turned my water bypass on if you do this, there's no need to turn the water to the uh, rig off. So if someone's inside and they still want to use water, if you do this, uh, you will have um, no issue with pressure in the tank. Once that's off, you can come over here and just uh, flip this pressure relief valve up. Oh, I've already done it. And when I did, that's where all this water came from. Uh, so you'll get a little burst of water out of that. But once that's done, the tank is... Uh, depressurized. The top of the anode itself is a 1 in 1 16th inch uh, socket. Fits over it very nicely. Uh, if you've not done this before, it will be difficult to come out the first time. I've already loosened this before I started videoing. Um, and it, mine was replaced about a year ago, so it's not uh, not too tough, but I guarantee you it's, been, it's, it's probably overdue. So we're gonna see now, once we get this out, how bad it is. You will get a gush of water out of this because this is the lowest part of the tank. All right, and there it is. It's not completely gone, but it's time. And what's happening here is, in case you don't know, this is what's called sacrificial metal. And it, we can get into the science of it, but it, it, it basically causes a cathodic reaction. Uh, and it allows this to it sacrifices the metal here instead of eating up the inside of your tank. Once this is gone, the corrosion will then uh, start eating away at the actual tank itself. This is a very inexpensive, very easy thing to do. And if you do it, you know, uh, at least every year, but depending on your water conditions, you might want to even do it sooner. I got 12 months out of this one. I'm actually pretty happy. I have seen these where there's just a stick left here. There's quite a bit of metal still on this, but I am definitely changing it. So here's the tank. It's emptying itself right now. Once it's empty, I'm going to uh, use that tank rinser and get the rest of the garbage out because all of this stuff that's, that's uh, rotten away here has probably pretty much settled at the bottom of the tank. You want to get that out for a couple reasons. One, believe it or not, it makes the heating elements work less efficient. It actually robs the heat um, transfer so they have you'll they will run longer they won't recover as quicker as quick as they will once it's clean so i'm gonna let that go and then we'll uh see what comes out when we hit it with rinse a little pro tip for you see how it's chugging chug 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 if you open this relief valve at the top it allows water it allows the air it basically vents the top of the tank and now you get that really coming out and actually it's a good thing to do for two reasons one, it's good to exercise that valve. That's a source of uh, grit a lot of times when they've just been sitting. And also, because the water's coming out of here a lot more forcefully, it's gonna tend to carry the sediment out with it a little better. Okay, let's see what kind of a mess we got in there. Kinda have to curb around a little bit. Sorry, I'm doing this with one hand and trying to record with the other. It's actually not too bad. You can see the color of the water is kind of crappy. That is the slip. Okay, here comes the sediment now. It's starting to really turn colors and get cloudy. We are getting stuff on. You're basically just going to want to work this back and forth like this until all the water turns clear. We'll just get as much of it out as we can. It's not going to be perfect. 
yes, it makes a mess. But you can actually see, turn this off for a second. You can actually see the sediment. It looks like sand. It's not really picking up in the camera, but it's, uh, I'll let this drip out. It will start to accumulate water faster than it can come out when you're putting a wand in there, but. You can see how the rod has a uh, downward uh, tip or a bent tip and uh, you do want to spend most of your time with that bent this way down towards the bottom because most this drain is just above the bottom of the tank so you're going to want to disturb the bottom of it to try to churn that stuff up and get it to come out uh, i'm almost done it's uh, running pretty clear had had a fair amount of stuff come out but i did want to show you that so you just you want to really don't be afraid you're not going to hurt anything Really, just the more you can stir it up, the more the water will carry it out. There's still, it's still got some stuff coming out. And every once in a while, you'll see a like you can see going down the sides here, those little white specks, those are mineral deposits. And I'm going to show you also on the threads, you can see where there are mineral deposits. Now, we do run a water filter, but this is five year old rig. Uh, coming up on five, and it has a lot of use. We are in this camper a lot, so you expect things to look like this after that much time. Okay, we're looking inside the threaded female end of the side of the water here. If you see this white stuff in here, it's actually on the threads. It's a little bit on both sides. That's actually built up mineral deposits and I like to get that out of there. Now, be very careful if you damage these threads. Uh, I don't think that's fixable. It may be, I don't know, but it would be a big deal. So be very, very careful not to bugger up those threads. So I'm just gonna take a wire brush and very gently uh, get that stuff out of there. This is the stuff that scrapes off. It's abrasive. It's almost like uh, plaque, really bad plaque on teeth. Um, and it does come off. You do have to take do a little bit of work, but you can already see I've already got it almost off. It took me just a couple of minutes, but I wanted to show you. Okay, the water's just about done uh, draining out, and I thought I'd uh, give you a side-by-side -side comparison here. Here's why we're changing it. That's what a new one looks like, nice and smooth. And you'll notice that uh, if you buy the Suburban, I think they all do this, but I buy the actual Suburban model um, uh, anode rod. Um, there's just a couple dollars more, and I figured I'll go with that. But they do come with the Teflon tape already installed, so you don't have to do anything. Okay, I've got the threads cleaned up. You can see almost all the white stuff is gone. There's a little bit way back in there, but it's uh, it's pretty, it's, it's actually further back than the threads actually of this will touch so i'm not really worried about that but i got probably a good 90 percent of it out and uh it's clean i still have to clean up this but i'll do that later um it's pretty cosmetic at the moment so the thing here is you're going to slide this right back in and make sure that you finger thread it in there do not put a socket on that until you for sure have it and it'll take a little doing because the rod wants to pull down and um, makes it easy to misalign. Get at least a turn or two on it, and then it's going to get hard because the Teflon tape is going to start biting. But I'm pretty sure I have that in there. I'm going to take a good look at it to make sure it doesn't look cross-threaded. And I think it looks good. So um, you're going to want to snug that up with the uh, socket wrench. Don't forget, now's a good time. Go ahead and close that. That has to be down. What this does is, if in the event the water heater ever malfunctioned and built up too much pressure, like the heat didn't turn off for some reason, this is designed to relieve that, relieve that pressure at a certain temperature and also a certain PSI. Uh, it actually says 150 PSI or 210 degrees. So if it gets to that point, it will uh, open and bypass and then you'll, you'll see hot water and steam coming out of that. That's, that's a, a pretty serious situation if you ever have that because it's, um, it's telling you that the 
the uh, heating element is over pressurizing. It's, uh, I've never seen it happen, but um, it is required to be on there. And you're supposed to test this every once in a while by pulling it. Um, very few people do that, but if you ever see a little bit of water leaking out of here, usually you'll see a little rust dripping down from here. There's usually a drip. And uh, when that happens, you can usually pop this two or three times and it'll reseat. Okay, the anode is back in. I got it pretty snug. I, I don't, there's probably a torque value for it. I don't really worry about that. Um, I just put it in until it's pretty good, pretty good and snug. And you can, you can see there will be some exposed threads, um, but that's how it was when I pulled it out. So now I'm just going to turn the water back on. And that is going to allow this to fill. If you pop this, you'll hear air escaping. And basically that'll allow it to fill right up to the top. I like to do that. Uh, it gets, it purges the air out of it quicker. And when water starts to come out of that here in a few minutes, I know that that tank is full. Then the next thing I'm going to do is, and by the way, I meant to start, mention this at the start. Um, obviously when I'm working on this, I have the power turned off to it. I don't have the gas or the electric turned on. Um, pretty safe but you don't want this thing to light off while your hands are down here or if you touch some wires or something like that so obviously common sense turn it off but once it's uh, refilled and I get water from the top of the tank I will shut this valve and then I will go ahead and turn the water heater on let it heat up and then check for leaks because uh, it, if it's gonna leak it'll leak when it gets hot because that hot water is putting more pressure on the tank than it is when it's cold. So you wanna make sure before you call it done that you check it when it's hot. That's it, uh, hope this helped somebody. If you still have the standard uh, suburban type water heater, which is what we have, and it's been super reliable, happy to have it. And uh, if you have any questions, be, be sure to ask in the comments and I'll answer them.